Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another session of Food for Thought as part of our NASA FarmCraft live streams. I am Eric Leitner, your STEM and computer science instructional facilitator and Minecraft. <laughs> I see Kathy doing hands up. You make me laugh during my Eric. introduction. All right, <laughs> fine. Uh, and global Minecraft mentor. Uh, and we are, of course, so excited uh, for, for the topic today. I don't want to give it away yet. So we're going to do introductions, but we have like the most exciting topic today. So I'm excited. So I'm going to pass the mic to Kathy real quick for a quick introduction. Uh, and uh, we'll go from there. Kathy. All right. Thanks so much, Eric. I'm Kathy Chow Isaacs, um, Global Minecraft Mentor and currently uh, Game Design and Development Teacher at William Anna and Bridge High School. So thrilled to be here. Very excited for this week's Food for Thoughts. Can't wait to chat about this topic. Um, so let me continue the introductions and pass it along to Samantha. If she's going to introduce herself. Hey. <laughs> no, We're going to She has to. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Samantha Anton. And uh, for NASEF, I have been helping uh, on the farm craft team. We've all been working together, planting the seeds, tending to the weeds, taking care of everything. And so, um, yes, that's mostly what I've been doing, helping teams feel prepared to submit their Flipgrid videos and get their scores onto the leaderboard. And as an avid gardener myself, this has been the perfect combination of Minecraft and the joys of, of everything else in life. Work and All right, Brian. You, you chimed in at the perfect time. Yeah, First of all, Sam, I'm... I want to prop out you leaning into puns during the introduction this time. Yeah, well done. totally. Leaning oh, hard started, into the puns. Everyone. That's right. Just totally stole all the dad all the dad <laughs> opportunities there. I mean, what's the deal with that? I don't know. Go uh, for yeah. it, Brian. Uh, okay, cool. So my name is Cleverlike. I am the uh, the of uh, the official, unofficial mayor of uh, Farmcraft. Uh, I I make video games for a living. I I uh, made Farmcraft the game, and uh, I'm responsible for any pain and suffering that might be happening for you guys as you're learning and playing this game. And I apologize, and you're welcome. Awesome. And so those are our usual suspects, right? We're, we're, we're the, the group that's always here, but we are so very excited about our uh, special guest that is joining us for this live stream, for this Food for Thought, um, because we get to talk about one of our favorite things, uh, by far for me, I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> And that's not to take away from any of our other guests. They were awesome topics. They were so much fun. Uh, but we get to talk about bugs. Who doesn't want to talk about bugs? bugs? And we get to do so uh, with the amazing uh, Dr. Siobhan Whiten. So I would like to introduce Dr. Siobhan. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks so much, Eric. And thank you to the team for helping me get up to speed as it relates to form craft. Um, I do not profess to be a professional. I am an entomologist by training, so can answer any question you have along those lines. I'm currently an Agricultural Biotechnology International Research Advisor with U.S. Agency for International Development. And so many of the topics, tools that you guys will use today over the past year, eight years or so prior to joining USAID, I utilized many of these in the laboratory setting to think of novel ways to control insect pests. Um, currently at USAID, I use global for a sci global, global science, pretty much helping to improve uh, crop development, decrease malnutrition, poverty, and hunger around the world. So hopefully we can talk along those lines and I'm here to answer any questions that you guys may have as we move through the game. Back over to you, Eric, and thanks so much. Absolutely, we're so happy to have you. Wow. And uh, this sounds fantastic because I'm gonna be honest, when it comes to questions or comments, the number one feedback we get from students, aside from what they did, what they've learned and so on, is, oh my goodness, the bugs. So <laughs> they stress about the bugs in the game. So good job there, Clever Like. Uh, <laughs> they definitely, it is a point of contention for them. Um, but we wanna talk more that, about that in detail. Is it always a point of contention for our farmers? What decisions do our farmers have to make when it comes to controlling insect populations? Uh, what are the positives and negatives about, uh, of those controls? Uh, so we're gonna dig into that conversation pretty deeply. Uh, before we do, uh, we're gonna jump in 
Wait, wait, wait. Hour. wait oh, I, wait, what did I forget? What did I forget? Oh. Before we jump in, okay, before how we jump does in. one begin the study of bugs? Like, I, I know that me for myself, um, they intrigue me, but I want to stay away from them. I like avoiding them. So how, how did you, what, like, where did this interest start and how did you, you know, decide to study and what, what path did you take? Great question, Kathy. I think bugs actually chose me and uh, all the places that my education has taken me. I think the name that resonates is the bug lady. Um, but I would honestly say my interest in bugs started well before I even, uh, realized it myself. I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So we have bugs all around. It's the perfect environment for uh, bugs uh, as ectotherms to, to really thrive and survive uh, since their temperature is regulated by the outside temperature. So, um, but I think when it came full circle to, for me was I was overseas doing an international summer program um, at the University of Cape Coast in Cape Coast, Ghana, and really saw the impacts that bugs in particular, mosquitoes were having on, on individuals. And so I, I came back to the US with this readiness and desire to dive into this challenge that not only led me from mosquitoes, I worked on bed bugs, cockroaches, uh, termites. And even now at, at USAID, I'm working very closely with scientists from all around the world as it relates to desert locusts and fall armyworm. So, uh, it, it is definitely, I would have to say bugs chose me and I, I just had to go along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, this is why I keep you around. That's that's a better question than any of the other questions we're going to have today. Yeah, that was no, really no, good. no, it's as, it's as good, but I always wonder, you know, how did you get there? Yeah. yeah, I don't know that I've met any adults that started where they ended. Like, and that's that's a good thing. It, it makes for really fantastic storytelling and, and, and leads to, you know, hopefully students realizing that these paths are constantly shifting for us. So right. it's, that's great. Right. Be yeah, open to the sure. adventure is what that's I'll right. say. Exactly. I love it. That is that is a perfect way to put it. Right. So let's get our game up on screen. Let's, let's do see it. everybody in the lobby. And I think we're all here. So I see Clever Like, I see Kathy, I see Sam. And over here behind me, Dr. Siobhan is with us and moving around like a pro, I might add. Yeah. So, yes. Before we, before we jump into a biome, and we are gonna kind of just slowly play through a biome, so I doubt we'll finish a full playthrough of the game today. Um, we've got some insects right here in the lobby um, that Brian has put here for us, um, perhaps decorative, but when we talk about uh, insect populations and controlling insect populations in terms of crops, which is something that a decision our students have to make as they play through the game, um, we don't dig too deep into the positives of insects, right? And so, here we have bees, which, uh, you know, if students are following the news, news and things like that, they know there are concerns around them because perhaps they are more of one of the positives. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about how farmers or how farming as a practice is addressing um, the differences in insects that are positive to that environment, and how they can be positive? And that was that was a pun. I'm just going to say it was a yeah, pun. Be positive. Oh, yeah. positive. Uh, and those that we have concerns about, right, that we would consider pests. All right, great question, Eric. And so um, a portion of my research throughout my master's actually really looked at the off-target effects, as we call them, uh, in the field when we're controlling for various insects that we've classified as pests that cause harm to our desired crop or anything of that nature. You always have to be mindful of the environment because there are insects that are indeed beneficial and bees are an excellent example that ha have received a lot of attention in the news. And so for my research, I focused in on insecticides. Uh, these are chemicals that are used to control insect pests. In my case, I focused on mosquitoes. But when we were controlling for mosquitoes, the insecticides that we used had, they were broad spectrum. So while you were trying to control the bad, you inadvertently affected the positive or the good insects as well, which you want to keep around because bees are natural pollinators. And so we had to really come up with this integrated approach where you draw on a whole toolbox of different techniques that, that can help to, to control the target insect or the pest at hand, but also is friendly to the insects that we want to keep in our environment um, and keep our farming system going. 
But that doesn't sound like an easy balance. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. No, sounds... it, it's not. It's not an easy balance, but hopefully some of the folks on this game will transition from Farmcraft to real world scientists and can help us take on this challenge as you move in your careers. I love that. Yeah. Hope so. Hopefully we've inspired a few. All right, so we are going to jump into one of our five biomes and one we haven't shared on the stream yet. Um, and specifically, we've decided to choose one today where insects are a serious issue. Uh, so maybe this is one of those ones where the students tried to play this one and came back with that, oh my goodness, the caterpillars were too much sort of thing. Um, so that's the island biome. So we're gonna talk to our island biome fire farmer here. And it says that the island biome is right uh, on the water and gets lots of rain. Lots of interesting insects live here even though the sandy soil isn't always best for plants. Can you keep your crops growing and, uh, and uneaten? Right, there's a really specific one, uh, until they're ready to be harvested. So we're gonna go ahead and play into that biome. And so now we are all mashed together, but we're Ooh. here on the island. <laughs> we'll spread out a bit. Oh, I fell right. in the water. You fell <laughs> in the water, that didn't take long. I know. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, I want to point out that Dr. Siobhan literally no issues, walked like right down the path, no problem, directly to the farm. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm trying to find the directions on the different options that we have. So, okay, so I am talking to the farmer here and it's welcome to our island. We live near the water and we get lots of rain too. Oh. Uh, the beach is a difficult place to grow plants and the bugs love it here. And running a farm, of course, costs money, which is something we hear in every biome, right? I think everywhere we go in the world, the farming costs money. <laughs> All right, so let's get started with this one. We're gonna follow our farmer over to the farm. Oh. All right, and we're gonna start here as we um, get into our options and our soil. And of course, one of the first things we see as our options are, uh, or among our options, I should say, uh, for spraying options is the insecticide spray. Uh, and we see some options, of course, uh, when we talk to our other farmer in each of our biomes as well. And I know uh, Brian has dropped some hints about that and maybe we'll get some more ga in game hints this time as we play along. I'm, I'm dropping that for everyone okay. who's, who is yeah. scared of the insects at this point. Um, but we wanna take a look at, so you had mentioned insecticide spray. So my question is this, um, you know, we talked about, you know, the difference between positive and negative sort of, you know, balancing those, those uh, insects that are positive to our farm and positive to the environment to those that are harmful to our crops. Um, are there specific ones that we focus on? So you had mentioned at the beginning some of the species or, or types of insects that you were focused on. Are there main groups that we tend to focus on or that scientists specifically have concerns about more or less so or more so than others or are there good and bad amongst all types of insects? I, I, I honestly would say that there are good and bad among all types. Um, it depends on the, the climate. Um, the elevation, there are various things that play into where insects are present. Um, and oftentimes it also depends on the threshold. Insects in a small amount, even if it is a pest, may not be of greater concern. But as you get larger populations, they reproduce, they mate and have offspring. When the pressure is higher, then that may warrant or present a problem. And so one thing to keep in mind is as climate continues to change, insects are better able to thrive and invade into new territories that they may not have previously been able to, to, to survive. So you now have the challenge of creating novel and unique ways to control insects uh, as we, we deal with uh, climate change, so. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So uh, we're having the conversation and I'm trying to progress through the game because of course we want to get to some of the parts in the game where we're making decisions around how we're going to handle our insect populations, whether that's through insecticide or the seeds that we choose and things like that for the students who have played it. Um, they're familiar with that. So if everyone wants to go over to the uh, the farmer by the lighthouse. Uh, I just chucked and, a hoe out oh, on the ground. Oh, did you just throw, throw some one. out there for everyone? Oh, who doesn't we're gonna, have we're one? Gonna... I don't have one. I there you one. go. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're going to work oh, together there's... real quick and get this all tilled so we can kind of advance to some of those steps where we're really focused more on the insect populations that are here. Um, so let me ask you another question while we're doing that. Um, while, since we're tilling soil, let's talk uh, about soil specifically a little bit and maybe what insects 
uh, can be helpful or harmful or bug or things that we would just use the term bugs, I guess, more generally, uh, can be helpful or harmful to soil quality, because as, as I'm sure our students are sort of figuring out, right, the, the quality of the soil is, is a huge factor in farm craft. Um, so, so how do insects affect that? Uh, there are a multitude of insects that can affect soil quality. Uh, so you have different approaches, but there are also beneficial insects that can also help to preserve and, and keep a steady soil quality. So I think it, again, it just depends. We're in a specific biome right now, but someone in another part of the world may be experiencing another pest uh, that they would have to uniquely develop an approach or a control strategy. So I definitely always tell folks, you know, be very cognizant of where you are and the environment that you're in, because what may work here in the U.S. may not work in some other part of the world. So, and soil quality does change, so. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, and again, like the, I think that was one of the uh, the reasons behind the development of the various biomes is biomes. To, right is, is to take a look at those different places. So I'm doing something I normally don't do, and I'm bringing this car around to pick everybody up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doctor Shabon can hop one. in. I'll stay back. I was oh, going to say we've got one less seat. Shabon, you should sit in the front. Hold on, let me go. You're going to take shotgun. <laughs> yeah, if you right click on that seat, <laughs> you'll hop in shotgun. We'll yeah, all get teleported she did anyway. Yeah, all right. She's definitely been practicing. We get to yeah. listen to the, the noise Sorry. of the engine. <laughs> she was tilling like a villain. She was. Uh, <laughs> that car, it's an ATV. It went up the stairs. Oh, yeah. No, I'm totally, oh, yeah, I'm yeah, totally yeah, good with off-roading off -road. in this thing. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Eric's all terrain pro. vehicle. We're, we're good. Uh, so we're going to head to the lab uh, where we're going to make some of the decisions around uh, insect populations uh, in our game. I love the I love the teleportation noise that you get when you go through the tunnel. Like Sam what? and I are like running after the car. All right. Oh, you're driving now. If you hit the space oh, bar and just jump, you will jump out of the car. <laughs> there you go. All right. So we're gonna head up into the lab. And of course, uh, on our left, we have our scientists that provide us with information, and this one right here is gonna provide us with some information on insect resistance, right? So we want to talk about insect resistance in crops and what that may specifically mean. Um, so the information here says insects come in many shapes and sizes. Some of them love to eat crops. I do like that it used the word some, right? Because I think that's what you've kind of covered for us. They're not all doing that, but some of them definitely are. Uh, infestations of these insect pests can destroy entire fields of crops. They can be eliminated as they attack your crops, but be careful. Uh, that you don't hurt your own plants. Insecticide and bug remover sprays are chemicals that can kill insect pests, but they will also kill other kinds of insects too, which can be harmful to the environment. So that was a that was a nice quick summary of what you gave us in far more detail and far more interesting manner. <laughs> what, else, what else do insects yes. like to eat? Oh, Kathy, you want me to go there? Insects <laughs> <and multitude. laughs> <laughs> right. I have a sense of where so, this is going. Insects do feed on plants, uh, plant matter. They also, in particular, mosquitoes feed on blood, female mosquitoes. But there are also some beetles, dung beetles in particular, which feed on poop. So insects have over time evolved. They are some of the... <laughs> most intricate um, organisms on the planet uh, have really evolved adaptive ways to survive and thrive in various environments. So insects do, some do eat poop as well. <laughs> but then are no. they, are they, they're not, um, then some are herbivores and some are omnivores? I don't know if there's a poopivore, Kathy. If that's the word you're looking for. <laughs> we, we need to make a classification for poopivores. That's right. <laughs> that's right. But would we argue that those insects that do that, that eat poop, I'm just going to use the word because I get a chance to. How oh, I know, how lucky happen, are right? we? Uh, we get to say poop a bunch today. <laughs> uh, you know, are some of the ones that may be helpful because are they breaking that down to add yes, those nutrients now. to the soil, right? Exactly. Those are helpful. Yeah. I was going to say, because, you know, again, like fertilizers and things like that, we know that manure, exactly. things like that are, right? Manure. We could use a fancier word like manure, although, again, we just say manure. poop. Can we just say you spread poop yeah, around? That's right. Okay, no, We'll use manure uh, from here on out, but it was we'll nice with, to use poop. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with manure now that we've got better terms, right? Or right. more. Okay. Right. Uh, well, Dr. Drillon, come over to this side of the lab. You're going to see the seed omatic. So I, I have a question, though. I have a question. 
Okay. Uh, normally on our streams, we would kind of do the thing that addresses the concern in the biome. In this case, we've learned that the concerns in this particular biome seem to be soil related and insect related. Insect related. But how, do, how do we feel about not purchasing the insect resistance in a environment where insects are the problem so we can kind of see the insects in action? <laughs> yeah, let me give you a tip. This is, this is a good time for me to jump in because- Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so like Dr. Siobhan was saying, like there's, uh, if you use insecticide, you have to be careful because you're attacking the pests, but also you could be getting some of the good ones as well. So there is a little bit of a trade-off if you decide to use it. So we do have a big bug problem, but the interesting thing about the insect problem, first of all, the number of butterflies is, is related to the number of caterpillars that you're going to see. So there's a little hint there. And if, if, and they're tied together. So if we have a lot of caterpillars, pillars, we're going to have a lot of butterflies. If you clear out the butterflies, you earn coins. So as a way of basically rewarding you for not using insecticide, if you get rid of the caterpillar, uh, the butterflies, you earn coins, which you could use later to manage your problem more, more directly rather than in a, in a broad way. So, um, so you think about it, if you do the genetic engineering, you, you basically reduce your bug problem as a whole, but um, maybe you want the bug problem as, a, as part of your economy that you're creating in the game. And so. That makes sense. So we still do have to choose seeds. And, and I love the, the notion that the butterflies and the caterpillars are linked because of course they are, but we have to choose seeds. Uh, so we're gonna see what it's like when we don't make them insect resistant. <laughs> uh, but let's, let's still deal with the soil issue, right? So we are going to do some, some hardier seeds that can handle um, the environment and the soil that are here. So I'm going to go ahead and we will choose that option for 150 coins. And, and this, is, this is the best part. This is the you, best you part. Could, you, could, you could spend more money because we're going to earn a lot more. We're going to earn more money. Okay. So what do you think we should put it into? Right. Um, we could look at drought tolerance, right? Because we are in a sandy one, but it does rain a lot on the island. So maybe that's not an issue. Yeah, I mean, we could do, uh, you could do the weeds, which will reduce our overall weed problem. That would give us time to talk more and pick weeds less. Oh, yeah, yeah. let's do that. <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. Do that. Okay, let's do that. Especially since that's our first few waves. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So we are going to go ahead and get our seeds. Uh, we'll push the button and let's watch the Seedtron 5000 in action. <laughs> this is so amazing. I love it. The magic of science in before your eyes. What are some ways that, you know, genetic engineering can work to, um, to help prevent insects from eating crops without spraying chemicals? So one that has been receiving a lot of attention lately as it relates to crop are, um, it's a technology that has been utilized to create what they call friendly fall armyworms, and it's through Oxitech. And what they do is create a larger population of genetically engineered uh, male mosquitoes. And what you'll do is inundate or really release a large amount into the population, and, and they would mate with females. And so ideally, this is a way to control um that pest but this is also this work was previously done with mosquitoes so it shows how technology can actually transfer from one insect to another and it's it's a, a, a novel way to to really control and not as heavily have to draw on those various chemicals that can be harmful in large amounts and can definitely remove some of those more beneficial insects. So if you wanna know more, I would say definitely check out, those are some of the cool studies that are going on now in parts of uh, South America and also here in the US down in Florida. My neck of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna head back to our farm. So we're gonna take the, uh, we'll take the car if no one stole the car. Nope, no one stole the car. All right. Sam I'm surprised that hasn't done. happened yet. I'm surprised no one has done that during our stream, just taken it and left. <laughs> Let's hop back in. All right. Anyone want to hop oh, in the yeah. back? We only we only had folks in the front before. Who wants to hop in the back? I think. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, 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 I think what happens is who it's order. 
it'll teleport also like it, it's um basically going to teleport anything you dropped and any players that haven't left yet it'll teleport them to the biome if they're not in the vehicle when it goes through the teleporter so and okay, actually Kathy, you're driving because i know oh, you're, I'm driving. Driving. All right. you're totally driving this time that could okay. be a strategy in some biomes because you get teleported closer to the farm uh, when you're not in the, when you're not yeah. in the vehicle. So you could Sam actually start. Get in the car. Right. Uh, right, right, the right. Ship on, you're not in the car. Right click, yeah. right click, right, right click okay. to hop in. in you got to away all the tips. Your head is on the car. <laughs> yes, you are like in the car. Right yeah, click. you, you got to back, back up a little bit and then right click in the center of the vehicle. Okay, let me see. How do you, uh, S is to back up. Yep, there you go. And then right click in the center of the vehicle. There you there are, you're in the back. Yeah, you're in. Okay, all right, I am in. All right, Kathy, let's do right, this. Driving. Kathy oh, and I were driving. driving. Kathy and I were... Kathy, you made a wrong turn, turns around. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would be remiss though if I didn't mention some of the cool work that USAID is actually um, overseeing um, and that I've been fortunate to work on. You asked about approaches that um, have technologies that utilize some of those more novel technologies so we don't have to use insecticides. Um, across sub-Saharan Africa, a key commodity is cassava. And so cassava. we've come up with novel approaches to um, really create uh, virus resistant um, cassava for Africa. And, and really this is a novel approach that has potential to really revolutionize um, the use of insecticides and how we control certain pests that transmit disease across sub-Saharan Africa and a, a really impact the ability to feed some of some of the some really integral populations around the world. So that is that is one thing that I wanted to bring to the forefront. Right. And that's something that we don't actually uh, have in our first run of uh, farm craft. And again, uh, we've got a lot. Uh, but we don't have choosing specific crops that may be, you know, based on what the population is and how many need to be fed, right? So again, okay. while we're making lots of choices in here, um, something, you know, and, and students are starting to realize how many difficult choices farmers have to make. We're, we're really scratching the surface of the choices uh, that they're making uh, because, you know, we're still limited to the field here. Kathy, did you park the car in the middle of the farm? Oh, am I still in the car? You're still driving yeah, the car. Now, now, <laughs> well, I got close to the car. Let's see. How do I get out of the car? There okay. you go. You oh, you just did it. Brian's going to go park. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, we're missing. The car. I, I, there you go. I was going to say. Um, oh, we already lost the one. I think we already lost one. Somebody jumped. That's okay. Oh, so definitely choosing a crop, I will say. Um, cassava is a big one that I work on. Also, uh, late blight resistant potato. That's another big... Uh, crop that is receiving a lot of attention for some of the work that I'm doing. So um, just really knowing what's rotation, what uh, what different pests are affecting your commodities and, and different drawing on different technologies to, to really control and what we call in an integrated pest management approach where you draw on the various tools that your toolbox will have. So the idea of rotating crops to control pests is the idea, just so I'm, I, I want to make sure I'm understanding it, is the idea that if we remove a particular crop, then the pests that feed on that crop uh, will disappear. And the, then when we plant a new crop, basically it gives us time before the pests that may feed on that one kind of propagates and we can kind of keep things before they get out of control. Okay, so some folks may have heard of it, but there is a method. So in that integrated approach that draws on several different technologies, be it utilize insecticides, biological control with insects. There's also, uh, you can do what's called a push-pull method where there are certain uh, crops that'll pull an insect and then repel a certain insect. So that's an approach that has been heavily um, researched and, and really drawn upon in the literature as we draw on, I like to always think of it, entomology and specifically um, pest control, this toolbox of approaches that you can draw on. Right. So, speaking of bugs, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what a I'm gonna I'm gonna make that pun because I I, I see you running one. around. Um, we may have to uh, jump out of this world and jump back in. It looks like we hit a little bit of glitch. Oh. Um. Oh no! There we go. You got it. I could always count on you, Mayor. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we're back in action. Next okay. day we'll be starting soon, and we're going to start with some some weed and think, you know uh, weed issues and things. But we did choose the herbicide resistant crop, 
So we'll we'll see if we can get that one under control pretty quickly. Uh, I, I was literally ready to pause out of here and like, you know, go back in and things like that um, and make sure um, that that we could do that. Um, so in the next day to a day or two in our game, we're start we're gonna start to see weeds cropping up and then of course uh, we'll start to see our insect population, which we took no measures to control oh. whatsoever <laughs> so far. Um, so let me ask you a question. When would that process usually, uh, like, let's talk about that process, right? So we want to control insects for a certain uh, area, for a certain farming practice or farm. Uh, when does that process or when does that, that, that thinking begin? Like, where does that process begin, right? I, I assume it doesn't happen, you know, mid farming cycle. So where does that process begin? As far as controlling and the mitigation practices, yeah, we haven't done say, anything yet. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> um, I honestly would say it, it starts ideally if there's a pest present pest pest problem previously, you would already have the knowledge that there's the potential for a reoccurrence. But if not, um, as soon as you see, um, we talked about infestations, but you just don't want it to get to where there's a large pressure and it makes it harder to control the pest. So the earlier, the better. Which is what we're doing right yeah, now. So exactly. our, first, our first pest has arrived in, in, in mass quantities. Uh, that might be the most uh, butterflies I've seen spawn in right. one shot. Yeah, um, and we're probably gonna get a few more before the day is out here, even this cycle. And, and sometimes they don't even show up in the first day, depending on the biome you're in or what you don't, you know, what decisions you've made. Yeah. Um, so let me let me go into this question because this one I think is a unique situation, and I love okay. that we picked it in this instance, right? So when we think of butterflies as pollinators, right, which would, could make them beneficial to our crops, yes. but their offspring <laughs> are the ones eating the crops. So how do we balance something like a, a moth or a butterfly problem, let's say, or specifically let's use butterflies because of what they eat. Uh, how do we balance a, a, an issue like this uh, where we get a problem with butterflies and then caterpillars when one stage of that life cycle is positive, right? And the pollinator that we need for our plants and one life cycle uh, like the caterpillars is negative because it's eating our crops. So how do we balance that when it's the same insect doing both? I think it honestly boils down to a trade-off. So as Eric mentioned, insects have multiple stages of development in many cases. And so for hola metabolists, those are insects that undergo this entire life cycle where they start off as an egg, they go to a larva or the caterpillar, and then they go to a pupa and then the adult. And so in that case, the adult is the butterfly and we all love butterflies. But the caterpillar stage in some cases has the potential to feed on the foliage, the leaves of the plant and cause severe damage to, to the potential crop. So it, it honestly boils to it boils down to being a trade-off and ultimately we, we need the food to eat as humans and then really to, to keep our systems going. So you would ideally have to choose to control the caterpillar stage. And that, that would ultimately affect the number of butterflies on, in downstream or in most cases, most of the pests are actually moths, not butterflies. Right. So would this be an instance where it, it, quantity may be a factor, right? As exactly. More so, okay. The pest pressure. Wait, what's pest pressure? Pest pressure. Oh, I, I love that. <laughs> well, I love that jargon. <laughs> I, I feel like those students who have been complaining about the caterpillars have experienced some pest pressure. Pest pressure for <laughs> sure. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> We're putting that term right in the game next time. That's totally they are pretty that. hardy. They will chump away at all of your crops if not <laughs> if not controlled properly. Right. And so far, I feel like we're doing pretty good. We've controlled uh, quite a bit of the, the butterfly population that's coming in. Uh, we're, we're managing the water and the, the herbicide Irrigation. to keep the weeds under control. Because we haven't oh, had a major man. weed problem. Although, Kathy, I totally <laughs> I saw that. Right, as I said no. I was, oh, I was so much trouble. Doing such I was a there. Good I looked job. away. I looked away. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing a great job. We have so many crops that are intact. And then I broke it. Yes. What do we do uh, about our Kathy pest problem? We have a request problem? in chat, ah! actually. <laughs> yes, Sam. Um, we have a request to talk about cicadas. Oh. <laughs> and apparently so it's there's my a understanding big swarm that's, that's... Up arriving to DC. Yes. Yeah, that's not a problem that comes up every year, is my understanding. Well, so... it comes up 
I feel like, doesn't it come up every year, but it's like the big swarms? Every few, it's not every year with the larger swarms. So yes. Right. Not yeah. The larger swarms come up every several years. Because I yes. feel like um, the 17 years, the can't have been 17 years. Exactly. And taking it more global, something similar that you guys may have heard of and with the pandemic and ongoing effects of it on a more global scale, Desert Locusts are also doing something similar across uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and Pakistan and parts of India as well. They're really impacting crop production, crop yield and things of that nature. So scientists um, like myself are working very diligently to try to come up with control methods and also surveillance methods. I mentioned that, you know, you want to watch and see when the pressure gets uh, elevated. So that requires surveillance. And so there are planes that fly around and drones and things of that nature and really survey the land to, to take pictures and really kind of help us determine where might the pest be going next? Where would it invade to next? And how can we get ahead of it? So if as it crosses across a given continent or a given country, how can we be one step ahead of the pest uh, to control? That's great. A great technology uh, opportunity, you know, for kids that are getting interested in drones and programming and things like that. You can actually exactly. program a robot drone to help you with agriculture. Exactly. So that is one thing we as scientists, we work very closely with engineers, economists. There are so many disciplines that draw into this uh, control method. Um, and, and we work collaboratively. Everybody has their unique skill set. So some folks may want to be scientists, also can be an engineer and work very closely with the agricultural system. So. Yep, that's awesome. I'm just frantically swatting at butterflies, forgive me. Uh, <laughs> so if you look at our coins, we, we're at 285 yeah. coins, which means we have a lot of money to maintain our soil level. We have the ability to maintain our fertilizer level. So we should have our soil quality oh. and water levels maintained high. That should be something we stay on top yes. of. And then when the... Okay. Um, Later, we will, uh, you know, I bought some bug spray for everybody, which you could Thank use you. to right click on caterpillars when they're when they're within your crops and you don't want to break the crops. You can basically the spray will target that that individual. Uh, you know, we had some students who were asking what the benefit of the bug remover spray was. And I yeah. guess if they realized they were punching their crops instead of punching the bug. Yep. And we're using the term punching because that's just kind of how Minecraft works. But yeah. uh, So you right click with the bug spray and it can uh, eliminate the caterpillar without eliminate your without crop. Without eliminating the crop. Okay. I think I might have eliminated a crop. Um, oh, I definitely yeah. eliminated one. And I was going to say, no one saw me do that. And then I remembered that well, I'm I, sharing my screen. So uh, just saw everyone me do saw you do busted. it. <laughs> There's also a, um, a butterfly net that you can get it, that you could use to right click see our soil just change color so that's when we start lose we start getting water penalty so i'm going to water it and now we don't have a water penalty so we keep our water penalty down when our soil is dark and, and moist oh, oh. makes, makes oh, perfect dang. sense what did we do another question from the chat yes so this one says what does dr white <laughs> recommend students do to prepare studying entomology and what types of careers are, there, are out there for entomologists Awesome. As more bugs come, well, bug swatting. <laughs> yes, there's a big there's a big career in bug swatting. <laughs> to get us started. Um, so that's a two part question. What can you do to prepare, and what are the opportunities? Is what I kind of gather from that. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, depending on where you're at in undergrad, high school. I would say definitely master the sciences. Uh, science is, entomology is, it draws on several disciplines. So I use toxicology, I use biochemistry, I use organic chemistry, I use molecular biology. Um, so these are all areas that help when you're, you're going, when you're in a laboratory setting. I would say get out in the field, um, really try to get opportunities to work with, with scientists, um, even if it's doing field work. Uh, that is kind of how I started. And look for uh, summer research opportunities. Um, 
there are a lot of opportunities, even if you're in middle school and high school, I, I know some that we at USAID offer um, to get kids engaged in science, but not just science, but science on a more global level. Um, and then what else would I say? Just be open. And I always call it the wonderful world of entomology, F-U-L-L. There are so many opportunities across entomology. I have worked in the area of medical entomology. I've worked in veterinary entomology, looking at how bugs affect livestock and different animals. Um, I've also worked in urban entomology. So in our homes, there are many structural pests from bed bugs, cockroaches and, and termites and things of that nature that wreak havoc on our, our home, our, our living dwelling. So really just exploring uh, and, and, and asking scientists what they do. I, I, I honestly will tell you, I initially wanted to be a, a veterinarian and I wanted to be a neonatologist and then a cardiologist. So, and I shadowed all of them and I ended up on research and then entomology. So start asking folks. And if you see a scientist, I'm certain they will be open to sharing their knowledge with you. Yeah, that's important because people do their work because they love it. And if you ask them about it, they'll love to tell you about it. They'll talk about it all day. They'll love yeah. to give you an opportunity if they can, you know, like, exactly. so that being connected as a, as a young person. Oh, oh that yeah. marks the beginning of the caterpillars. <laughs> so Brian, I saw you running around throwing the uh, bug remover spray at everyone. Um, and um, I wonder if, you know, we, we talked about it a little bit and now we'll see it in action, but I wonder if any of the students, maybe even on the call or anything, have kind of figured out, I'm going to throw some water over here. Oh, I just did it. Sorry. Oh, we both did. Couldn't hurt. A little extra water. Never did. Um, I wonder if they have important. figured Those are some huge caterpillars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's well, Minecraft. If we made you them saw the bees, size, right? It would, be, it would be hard, right? Yeah. I think. Yeah, so Center, you punch you punch them if if you see them, not in the way of the crops, and you use yeah. the bug spray if they're with if they're inside of a crop and you don't want to lose it. Okay. Now the other thing we could do we could we could buy a sp a spray now, which only lasts per phase, like per uh, per day uh, cycle, um, but it will at least stop the bugs from. Uh, eating more than one crop, for instance. So, right. uh, you know, what I've learned is, and, and Dr. Siobhan, maybe you can talk about this, is that the um, some of the genetic engineering of, of crops and the way pesticides work is that the uh, when the bug eats the plant, they, they die. So the genetic engineering makes the crop poison to the pest, as does, uh, you know, a pesticide spray. So you're indeed correct. And one technology is the Bacillus thuringiensis, or BT for short. Um, it has been integrated into a few crop varieties. So um, we have BT eggplant, we have BT cowpea, we have various commodities that have utilized this technology um, so that when, when the insect feeds upon the plant, it will have a negative impact on the insect itself. So you have to, it really, you don't have to use as many insecticides as a result. That's oh. interesting. Yeah, my, my question is this then, if we didn't do that, right? So we chose at the beginning sort of not to do not anything or cause approach. our plants to be insect resistant. And the only thing that we sort of have, aside from like the hand-based sprays or the spray that we can spray on the crops daily, um, is the sort of muscle power, if you will, right? So we've got, we're playing multiplayer. We've got a lot of you farmers in here working together uh, to mediate this problem, is is this even a, a viable solution, or how much, you know, sort of quote unquote manpower would it take to deal with some of these problems oh, if we were cool. going to do it this way? I, I think it definitely would take a large amount of manpower, but in this um, biome, we don't have the option to draw on other insects that maybe could feed on the calipers from the outside inward. Um, those uh, are also uh, parasitoids or things of that nature that our insects, but can be used for our benefit as well. So that is something to always consider. Um, as you look at more of that integrated approach, I, I briefly touched on on a uh, few occasions here. Yeah, I love that, that about farming, about how farming uses 
nature to combat nature. So your idea of like you, you combat an insect problem with insects that insects, are the enemy right. of the insect, you know, and uh, I think that's so creative that uh, the, uh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> Exactly. That sort of logic. Uh, but you know, let's let's take that a step further and talk about how we can use nature to our advantage. So, so very often, um, students, teachers, adults, community members, you know, we see this uh, very often in social media and things like that. We tend to immediately jump to the conclusion that all sort of quote unquote insecticides are uh, man-made chemicals or synthetic chemicals. Um, you know, that we're spraying upon the plants that, that have adverse side effects as well as, well as positive ones. Um, are there examples of, of, of naturally acquired things that we use for that same purpose or that can be used for that same purpose? Um, and does that work in every situation or is it maybe in specifics? And I totally just broke that crop and no one saw me do it, even though I just announced it to everyone. So in general, insecticides or anything that are, or any substance or, um, that is used to control insect care. So, and many of the synthetic insecticides are derived or they come from uh, natural products. So one of them that I worked on, it's, in, it's a pyrethroid insecticide and it is derived from a plant and it's extract. So uh, much of the synthetic science that we use today, it derives from something that was natural um, in the environment. So I, I think that's always one thing to, to bring home. Right, so even, even the synthetic ones, even the ones that we're making, they're, they're getting those ideas or learning, let's say, what is adverse to the insects um, in nature, right? Because there are probably things that insects would eat or come in the exposure to naturally that would be harmful to them. Exactly. As well. That is that is super cool. Like I, I hate you know I'm going to use the most simplistic term of two words, but it's just super cool, yeah. right? Because it, it makes sense uh, to find logic in. Let's let's just observe what we start with what we know, right? Start with what we can observe. Exactly. And I I think that was one key uh, one cool thing that I realized throughout my science journey that many of the tools and technologies that we have. Uh, that are man-made or are, are derived from natural things or natural processes that were present in other organisms that we just adopted, tested in a lab, and then really um, extended those to, to trials in the in confined or closed environments. And then, you know, you just move through various stages of development of research that ultimately after years and, and testing under multiple environments, under conditions, changing various things, you draw together a lot of data. That's what science is about, evidence. And so once you have a substantial amount of evidence, then maybe that technology can be applied more, more broadly. So I, I think uh, that is definitely one, one thing to bring home that as a scientist, you do a lot of observation, data collection, and analyzing the data. Um, so if you like numbers, if you really enjoy being challenged, proposing a lot of questions and then testing the questions, science is definitely an area for you to consider. I love that. So I know we're reaching sort of the end of our conversation time-wise. And I know Sam would have chimed in by now if I had, I'm not saying on time and maybe she didn't chat it. I can't see it right in a second. <laughs> um, she's very good at keeping me on track. Um, <laughs> But is there anything that you'd want to say in closing, either to the, the students who are participating in the game, the teachers who are using this as a tool in their classrooms and maybe watching the live stream right now, if there's anything that we didn't cover that you want to add before we go? I, I kind of want to make sure you have the time to do so. I, I think the only thing I would like to reiterate is science, you are the future. You're playing this game, but the game translates to real life, real world issues that are of global concern. And so if, if you have the slightest inkling or calling or enjoy many of the things that you see throughout this game, I would definitely say, take it a step further, explore, ask questions to real life scientists um, and, and for teachers and educators, keep the questions coming. That's what science is, is all, science is all about questions and then being able to properly address those questions so um and if i can answer any questions or be a, uh if you have any other questions about my career path and how i got into science and what has kept me in science more than willing to to answer those all right anything else from the panel here before we move on 
I'm curious to know how we're doing. Too. What what stage are we in, Brian? This is the this will be the last one. Yeah. All right. So we'll have to stick with it a little bit. Even we if we do have a lot of people screen. saying thank you to Dr. Whiten for joining us. Yes, and, and we, we want to say thank you. Uh, Uruguay. Thank you guys for the time. opportunity. I don't know how much I helped with controlling the insects, but in real life, <laughs> I can really help. <laughs> You know, she's like she's the insider. She's like the right. one. She's like the insect whisperer. Right. You gave like us when... you gave us fantastic advice on how to handle this uh, as best mm -hmm. we can. Yeah, I, I love the idea that you know that. Um, what I like about the game, you know, and some people are like insecticide, herbicide, chemicals. I, I don't want to do that. And like I think that's that's the catalyst. That's the purpose of the game is to catalyze those emotions and those feelings. Because the next question is. Well, what would you do about it and how would you solve it? And how do you, you know, can you understand the real problems and can you be the person that comes up with a better solution? You know, so I think that's um, one of the nice things about the game in introducing all of these concepts is that hopefully it makes you decide. The choices. Uh, yeah, that you yeah. don't want to do something like, oh, I don't want to kill insects. Okay then how, how do you still want to deal with the problem? Maybe you're the future. Maybe, maybe you're the right. person that could come up with a better solution. And one of the things I love about science is this idea that wherever we are, whatever modern practices are, that's not the end, right? We, we can always continue to research, continue to research study, and continue and to improve our practice. So. Exactly. And mm -hmm. I, I think this, you guys were spot on. You not only provided the tools, but you have to make a choice based off of a, a budget. That is ultimately a key part of farming, keeping farming systems going. Um, and then looking more broadly at, I work on the side of looking at US investments in agricultural products around the world. So this is something we always have to take into account is the trade-offs. How much does one thing cost? Or if we put our, our money here, what, what might other alternatives allow for? So really understanding that holistic approach and Drawing on, I mentioned it briefly, but economics and, and understanding those principles as well. So nice. Yeah. And in the in the island biome, you have to uh, punch the crops because there's no room for a harvester. Harvest. Okay. Um. But yeah, that's that's this, fun, right? We got a score. We did, yes, and score. um. So I think now is the perfect time to transition. Uh, into the reminders for our students. So I'm going to jump away from here, but we got a score of 2147, which I'm actually pretty proud of considering we did that while having a conversation. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I feel like everyone contributed really well to that. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we could have used our coins a little bit more, but, you know, we, we did a good job. Um, they, they, count so, to your, they count to your score, though. So now I think balance. the question, right. So the question is, what do we do with that score? Ah, oh, uh, see my segue? Score. You see my segue there? You nailed it. Wow. nailed it. All right. So, Ten points. Um, just a reminder to all of our students, um, you know, the, the, the season is still going, although it's it's wrapping up soon. Um, so for, for all those students that are watching, you can still submit your scores. You still have time to do that. Um, and of course, you can do that at nasaf.org slash learning slash farmcraft slash leaderboard. And if that is too much to remember, you just head over to nasaf.org, click on learning, head to farmcraft. And if we scroll down, we will see the information about the regular season leaderboard right here and that will give us our leaderboard. Now there is some new thing, there are some new things to look at on the leaderboard that you may wanna check out. Uh, thank you, Sam, for this. And that is if we scroll way down to the bottom. So when we first see the leaderboard, we see all of the scores from all of the biomes. Uh, but if you're curious about how your score stacks up in a specific biome, you can now scroll down to the bottom and you'll see that you can choose the cold, the desert, the island, or the temperate or the wow. tropical biome. So we chose island. island. Let's see how we did. Oh, you know what? We're still in the middle of the pack here. Some right of them are, there are some who are just, just showing us what's up. So there are some farmers with better yeah. practices better out there than us. So we're going to have to keep playing uh, and get better scores and submit those scores into the portal. And you still have time to do that. Uh, we do also want to remind you um, that the Flipgrid uh, links are still active. So if you have not submitted your diary entries, of course, Challenge three is still live right now uh, through Friday, and that is that due date. But if you have not submitted for regular season challenge two or challenge one, uh, you can make sure that those are in because if you are going to be eligible uh, to win any of the competition or the prizes, you do need all of those components to be in there. So if your diary entries are not 
complete, uh, you have time to get that done. So make sure you do that. And you can do that, of course, uh, through our Flipgrid site. Sam, am I forgetting anything? I got a head shake, no. <laughs> no, you did one of the best closings that we have had on yeah. stream. <laughs> I feel like Absolutely. you're telling me to, to close it out now. No, 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 no. I was reading the <laughs> chat. If you're continuing having problems with Flipgrid links, please email. Um, email us at info at I will be the one responding. So I will help you get your Flipgrid links. I just can't leave it in the chat because we need students to be registered to get access. All right. So with yeah. that, I am going to stop yeah. my share and bring it back to us. <laughs> We're back. That um, was fun. Dr. Siobhan, that was, that was so awesome. Oh, thank that you was guys, so much Eric. fun. It was yeah, also we... thorough. We rarely actually get through the whole game on a stream. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so so that it went right along with what was going on on, on screen. It was great. Uh, and a lot, a lot of good information. Control, but try to give as much information as I can. You know what? You gave us, you gave us the understanding of our purpose there. So, and I think that's the important mm -hmm. part, right? We have students doing these things. We want them to understand the why, the challenges, exactly. and how you know real world scientists and real world people are dealing with those challenges. And you gave us all of that insight. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, Kathy is applauding. You can applaud louder now, Kathy. Because oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you guys so much we're, we're, for we're helping me class. not land in the water like I did the first time I tried this game. <laughs> no, leave that part out. No one has to know about it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, who's tuned in on the chat. We're going to close our stream out here. So we'll talk next week. All right. all right. So thank you everyone for tuning in. Thank you all very much. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.